Amen. Okay, I think we're in Colossians. We're, we're going to go to Colossians 2 again because now we're going to start contrasting 2 with 3. But one of the things I'm going to need you to do is I'm going to need you to pay attention as we're reading through because you're going to find similar wording, not all the way through, but you're going to find some similar wording in 2 that's in 3. And we need to see if, if, uh, if Paul is just repeating himself or is he applying it differently, okay? And since we said that, <clears throat> we will notice in Colossians 2 that um, much, of, much of what he's saying is what was done in Christ or you can say what was done at the cross or you can say what was accomplished long ago that we plug into by faith, however you want to word it, it is <clears throat> um, in that realm. And once he starts establishing that realm, that which, which realm is in the person of Christ and in union with that person, then still in two, he's going to begin to, to apply that but he's not going to apply it to in you yet, in the sense of in you, because uh, he's talking about in him. But he's going to bring up the things of the law, the tabernacle, you know, uh, judging and meat and, you know, uh, worship and stuff like that. <clears throat> More outward religious things that he is saying, now that you're in union with the real, these outward things were just shadows of the real, which is... Christ, and he says that, you know, we've been over this, his, which is Christ, and he says it's Christ over and over, or the body, which is Christ's body. And, um, but as we get into chapter 3, we begin to see a real um, uh, a turn um, where he's no longer talking about in Christ, he's talking about in you. What's going on in you? How much of you know, he's saying, how much of the chapter two pill did you swallow <laughs> to make it chapter three? And the reality of this at work in us. And you know, it has to be that way. It can't just be all deep truth that's true 2,000 years ago and, you know, this settles it and I can pretty much do anything I want or whatever because I'm deep and spiritual. No, it is because, you know, it is three is moving into the realm of, this is very practical, and it's meant to be practical, but this, 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 this is the Christ that we're in, but he's in us. It's the Christ that we're in in chapter 2, but in chapter 3, it's the Christ that is in us. All right, so let's notice again, uh, starting off with verse 9, the in him or in union reality. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him, which is the head. So, so we discuss that, but it is, um, <clears throat> it is really and truly it's a doctrine at first because when you hear it, it you have to embrace the doctrine of it in him, I'm complete in him. But it's only a doctrine until the Spirit of God shows you that the completion is Him. You know, and you, you'll go, oh, praise God, for no reason at all, I'm complete. <laughs> and, and He's going to, you know, He's going to dig on that in chapter 3, dig into the core of that. But, um, but when you hear that, you can go, you can say all you want, well, praise God, then I'm complete. You know, it's great. By the way, I've, my larynx may be crushed on some level. I had a weird accident or something. And we'll eventually get to the doctor and check it out. But I mean, it's, it's pretty bad in there. It's not just my rip. My, I still have all of that. Can you believe it? I've taken antibiotics, uh, the, the whatchamacallit shots, all that. And it's still flowing and I'm still coughing and the whole bit. But it's this other thing that's below that that's even worse. But I'm in Jesus, and I'm glad to be here. I love the Lord, and if I sound like this duck quacking, I don't care. I just want to lift up the Lord. 
is this a, was this on my car? A ticket? Parking ticket. We got Faf, Sharon, Amy, Julie, Mel, and Celia, who is breaking my heart. I'm kidding, Celia, that's a song. Okay, so, um, you know, this thing, this chapter really does some great dividing up if we can see it. It's, it's, um, um, it's telling us we're in him, but then it's telling us the result of that, that we're complete in him, and that in him dwells all the fullness, so if I'm plugged into him, I don't need to know anything or act any certain way. That's the way we could think in chapter 2. And, um, uh, but then to say that, uh, and he's writing it, actually, to write that to the Colossians is that, you know, they're going to read it and go, well, praise God, you know, with no revelation of it, just the fact of it. Well, that's the, that's the whole point of the Bible school. That's the whole point of this church. The whole point of it, from the very beginning, is that we get the revelation, the unveiling of Christ to see the meaning of this instead of get the meaning of it to explain Christ to us. Meaning the meaning, I'm complete in him and that explains Christ. No, 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 no. That, the revelation, the unveiling of him explains him. And this right now, as it were, is just information that has to be has to be brought in by the Holy Spirit in a new way. So when we read the word, we read with a heart that says ink on white paper is not enough. I need you, Holy Spirit. Jesus said you would declare me. Jesus said that you would be sent here for that primary purpose. And I want to live in relationship with you on a daily basis as much as I can so that this becomes not scripture but living word. <clears throat> so, in whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hand. So we talked about that. Um, in that, um, uh, it says in him you're complete and then it says because in him you're circumcised. Your flesh was cut off. Okay, so that there's your excuses out the window right there. <laughs> in him I'm complete uh, because the flesh was cut off, you know. Okay, Lord, I need to understand this. Amen. <clears throat> All right. And then he says, with the circumcision of Christ made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. All right. So I want you to notice that word in, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ because we're going to get a further explanation of that in chapter 3. Okay, So because we could just read it here and go, yo, okay, yeah, what he said, you know. But it's, you know, so he's not going to leave us just with this information. He's going to dig in. Um, and what we're going to see throughout this chapter is word usage again and again that he'll use in three where he's going, okay, now let me further explain that. Okay, let me further explain that. So, so in one sense he's using this word usage and he's painting this picture of the reality of Christ that is above and then in another sense, and I, in a sense this chapter three verses one through three or four is really just a transition into three out of four and we'll see that in just a second but he's using all of these same phrases uh, in chapter two with the point of coming back and then trying to help us to to enter enter into that all right so and that this is one of them <clears throat> um putting off right most of you know chapter three right putting off put off is, is that better I'm put off with you. No, no. We're, first we get put off with the old man, then we put him off, okay, by the cross. All right, so um, uh, the, by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, 
Okay, so here is, we are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God. So where is your, what, what is being directed here? Your faith is being directed here, not the full revelation of Christ, but it, your, your faith is being directed there and it's being directed at an op uh, uh, operation of God that took place 2,000 years ago that how are you going to, you know, work that? How are you going to apply that um, simply by saying, I have a faith that this was done 2,000 years ago? Well, yeah, there is a process where faith begins to arise in you. And you, be, you there's this word called assurance. And assurance begins to be settled in you. But it's all settled on something that happened 2,000 years ago at this stage. At this stage. But we've got to get past just that. I mean, praise God. for I believe in assurance of faith, okay? No matter what area it is, I believe that the Spirit of God wants to give us assurance in the things that Jesus has accomplished already. But if we don't have that assurance in chapter 2, the time we get in chapter 3 and it starts, you know, talking about, you know, mortify the deeds of your body and all this stuff, we're going to be lost because you, you can't do that with the, without the assurance that this is already done, but he wants it worked in me. Do you kind of understand that? All right. Um, <clears throat> through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him? Okay, so you remember Ephesians, he hath raised us up. It's H-A-T-H. -H. It is a past tense word. And, and uh, chapter 2 is very much past tense where we draw, where our faith rests in that which Jesus accomplished. Which is good, but not the full meal deal. <clears throat> Who hath raised him from the dead. Well, sometimes we miss that because we start looking at he raised us. But he didn't raise us except in him, and we know that from Romans, and we know that from Ephesians, and we know that from... Um, thanks. Yeah, yes. Is it that bad? <laughs> Is it all the way to my chin now? <clears throat> I'm glad I didn't pick their names up and stuff. <laughs> Um, risen with him, buried with him, hath raised him from the dead. And you, I always read this verse when it follows that, like he's pointing, it's like, he hath raised him from the dead. And you, buddy, you need to listen to this, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> um, who hath raised him from the dead, and you being dead in your sins, you and the uncircumcision of your flesh. Okay, so um, kind of what we're going to see is like in chapter 2, the circumcision of your flesh happened at the cross 2,000 years ago. Does everybody agree with that? But in chapter 3, He's going to clearly start saying mortify, you know, it starts, you know, what, verse 5 there, mortify the deeds of your body, and the word mortify means put to death. So you go, well, which is it? Well, it's both. You know, it is reality applied personally. And that's the goal. God knows we cannot make a Bible school, we should not make a Bible school that's just based on depth and, you know, teaching, you know, that has no real place where, where we are put off, as it were, and he's put on. Yeah. We can't do it. We shouldn't do it. And, and if we have done it, we shouldn't do it any longer. Yeah. We shouldn't, you know. And, uh, and I do believe this, and I'll tell you, but I believe all those prayers that we prayed from 2010 up to now, is going to usher in a whole new thing. You know, we already feel the rumblings in the mulberry bushes, right? But, but it's, the, you know, 
Did we say something about it, or should we wait till Sunday for the other? Okay, well, I was going to tell you that uh, Teague's going to come in, back to the Bible school. But if I did, that would have been a lie. He's not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Carrie is. <laughs> you weren't in here, Dennis. I told them that I, I tried on your slippers underneath the bed there and just walked all over. Yeah. I went through the mud. I hope it's okay. You can clean them up later. <laughs> no, but when I laid down, I said, Dennis Patrick laid in. Slept slept in this bed. We should put a plaque on that. <laughs> oh. Um. <clears throat> and you being dead, let's just read it like that, and you being dead hath quickened together with him, now we know that it's in him, right? But it's, it's with him in his death, with him in his burial, in him in his death, in him in his burial. And quicken means to, to what? Make alive. Make alive? But you're in him. How is he making old sinful you that was dead in your sins alive? By him being the life. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I am the life. So if we're being Christian for Jesus that's way up there, but he's not the life, then we're, it, we may be saved, we may be, but we're missing the, the riches. And, and you know what? That's what uh, Colossians 1.27 really says. What he wants to reveal is the riches, which is the riches of his life, and his nature, not, you know, well, I'm going to get an inheritance when I get to heaven. You know, I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to get some, you know, I'm going to get a crown, you know, which, you know, we see the elders getting a crown, right? In the book of Revelation, and what did the elders do with it? They, they took those crowns and they threw them at the feet of Jesus. Yeah. You know, they didn't go, hey, look at me, you know? And how many stars do I have in my crown? <clears throat> I asked the, I, I did. I asked the Lord, Lord, how many thorns are going to be in my crown? And I meant it seriously. That would be a, way better to me than a star. You know, how many thorns can I wear? I, I, some people don't understand me. <laughs> But I, do, I want to be with him in his death, burial, and resurrection. And in his resurrection, well, I was talking about that <clears throat> when I was up in Washington, is that we're the body of, of the risen one. Amen? We're the body of the risen one. Well, look on the throne. Who's the risen one? We're the, we're the bleeding body of the lamb that's slain on that throne. We're the body of him. The church, which is his body. See? And, you know, what do we look like? Well, we always look at the crowds going, yeah, yeah, yeah. But inside, they're supposed to be the body, the carriers, the, that, that spirit. So that when we look, we see a slaughtered lamb, him in us. And we're manifesting that. We're not him, but we manifest him. And so anyway, <clears throat> a lot of these things certainly uh, start redefining our understanding um, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Okay? And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let no man therefore, let no man therefore, let no man judge you. He didn't say, let no man uh, uh, take meat. He said, don't let anybody judge you in that because if you're doing it, do it in the whole, because remember back here, uh, to us, everything's passed away and now we have buildings with steeples. Back then they had one temple 
and they all still hadn't you know, gone all the way around the world. Paul was, but not everybody else was. And in Jerusalem, they still you know, worshiped in the temple, daily in the temple and from house to house. Sometimes we forget that. We go from house to house. You know, yeah, daily from house to house. It says daily in the temple, from house to house. And all, probably offering things in the knowledge and the reality of this is, this has more meaning, folks. And they're saying this, God initiated this so that in this offering we could see the beauty of his son. And, you know, and I'm sure they were still, could, could you imagine standing there and the fires burning and the sacrifice and, all of a sudden you're looking into the flames and into the death and you see the reality, the eternal reality there instead of just a, a, a passing thing that we did every, every day or every time we sinned or whatever, you're going, oh my God. So he's saying don't, you know, don't judge in relationship to, thank you, sir. I needed that. I'm just kidding at y'all. You're welcome here. Thank you. Uh, the Rose of Sharon has joined us. Hi, Sharon. <clears throat> um, let no man judge you in meat or drink or respect of an holy day or new moon or, the, or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things which is to come. When he says which is to come, it's already come in reality, but it needs to come in us. It needs to come in us so that we are full of the reality of this instead of the teaching of it. The teaching of it, you know. <clears throat> um, and of new moons, the Sabbath, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Okay, so every ounce of these offerings that, you know, we see the body go in there or we see the body opened up and it's it's inward parts laid bare to God's fire that's going to fall on it that's us the body the inward parts is Christ we're supposed to be one with him in that in the spirit of that in the spirit of self-giving it's not you know you all know this but we're not talking about well in a couple of weeks somebody's going to come slice you open and you're supposed to, you know, and then burn your house down or whatever. We're talking about the spirit of the lamb. We're talking about the spirit of the family. We're talking about the spirit of the Godhead. We're talking about a nature that, that is eternal and that is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Because some people look at, um, they, they say, well, Jesus was this big glorified son of God forever in uh, eternity past. And then he came down for like 33 years, and he went through this horrible stuff. But he's back up again, and now it's just glory and glory. So that would mean that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, is just the supreme being. But it's not just being the supreme being. Jesus came to manifest God. He was the express image of God. And it wasn't, it wasn't just, you know, well, God will you know, take some, a fish and go, oh, there's 10 of them. You know, we go, oh, that's God. You know, what? you know, don't you? Well, I'm saying that because the when Moses, you know, God said to Moses, take this rod and go before Pharaoh. And so he's going, yeah, I got the rod I got it, da, 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 da. And so, you know, he throws it down and it turns into a snake. And then all of the, what do you call them? What? Yeah, the, the magicians, I was going to call them wizards, so I'm glad you <laughs> All the wizards in, in Tolkien's book <clears throat> um, threw theirs down and they turned into snakes too, you know. So we would go, you know, um, well, they're of God too. It doesn't say in the book of Revelation that many will be deceived by reason of the miracles that are done. Okay. So if miracles is the thing that identifies God, then the Antichrist, or at least the false prophet, is God too. If miracles identify, or the definition of God, then we're gonna be deceived because it's not that. 
and we're going to be deceived by the false prophet in the book of Revelation, if that is a whatever. And um, we'll never know him. We'll never know him. We'll never know the Lamb of God. We'll never know the full reality of the Lamb beyond just the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Whereas John the Baptist, the very next day, the next day, Jesus walked along and he said, just behold the Lamb of God. And his disciples followed the Lamb, not to take away the sin of the world, but to follow the Lamb. Book of Revelation, they are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goes. So anyway, you know all this. <clears throat> or at least I've taught this before. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Verse 18, let no man beguile you of the reward and the voluntary humility and worshiping of angels and intruding into those things which he hath not seen, very vainly puffed up of the... Of, the, of his fleshly mind. Is it possible to learn deep things that really aren't really even Jesus and to be puffed up in our vain minds? Is that possible? If, if I ask the Lord, just make, a, just make a dark cloud come over each of you if that's happened to you right now, would you be okay with that? And then, you know, <laughs> some of you'd be going. <laughs> It wasn't mine. It flew over from, from mom. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, and, and so all that we're going, oh, man, you know, uh, uh, I've learned this. And I, but, you know, it's a false humility, and it's all the things that it's saying here. And, but, I, uh, but in my mind, it's, it's not puffed up. It's full of deep things. And, and, uh, and I go by the depth of the deep things that I got. And the next phrase says, and not holding the head. You've become the head. Amen. You've become the head. Amen. And you've become the head on the basis of the stuff you know. Amen. I don't want to be the head. Right. And if knowing deep stuff is going to do that to me, then I'll just make all of my prayers, Lord, I just want to know you. And I want to know you in your spirit and in your nature. I want you to, to, to bring forth your son, Father, in that spirit in me uh, so that Christ will be all and in all, which, by the way, is in chapter 3, <laughs> you know, because that's the goal. It's, it's like slowly sweeping everything out so that Christ will be all and in all. <clears throat> all right. So. Um, not holding the head, from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together increased with the increase of, of God. So, so he's <clears throat> saying to hold the head is that which is the head is going to guide, lead, fill. You know, you remember Psalm 118, didn't it? They poured, you know, the the on the head of the high priest and it flows down to the body you know and behold how good it is for brethren to dwell together in unity it is like the oil upon the head of Aaron the high priest well Jesus was the high priest that flows down to us and he he is flowing down to us as we know him in union because the body is joined to him you know in union of him and it's not like he's going he's not taking a segment of his great knowledge in his head and going, here, elbow, you know, have this great depth. No, it's that which is him that begins to flow down. And again, so that Christ may be all and in all. So, we, so we're not, this has nothing to do with self-improvement, you know, or behavior modification. Increases with the increase of God. Okay. Well, what does that mean? It's not the increase of Christ there. It's the increase of God. It's the increase of that spirit of self-giving between the Godhead. <clears throat> Wherefore, if you be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, oh, is that going to come up in chapter 3 also? 
could it possibly, that phrase? <clears throat> why, as though living, why as though living? Why, is it, why as if you're alive? If you're dead, why as if you're alive? Amen? Let's say that together. Why, as if dead, are you living? Now turn to somebody and say, why, as if dead, are you living? <clears throat> now look at that person and say, stop it. <laughs> um, because that is the crux of it. If you really are dead, okay, so we're complete in him and we're circumcised through him. Didn't it say early on that we're, the flesh is cut off and we're dead? Now he's saying, why as though dead are you living as if you're not dead? Okay, well, because um, I'm complete in him. And that's all that counts. So I'm going to live as if I'm not dead but I'm going to believe in, that he died to make me complete. In other words, I'm going to, I'm going to live by the knowledge of Christ, or, or I'm going to walk by the knowledge of Christ while I live by the devil. <laughs> uh, rudiments of the world, why is though living in the world? Are you subject to ordinances? Okay, so we're back to still dealing with outward things of that Jesus is the fulfillment of, so no, 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 this is, these are all shadows. But now we're about to go into chapter 3. He's not going to be talking about, you know, touch not, taste not, ordinances, or, or judge you and meat, and da-da-da-da. He's just going to talk totally about Christ being the life. And, uh, and that will work for Gentiles, and of course the, the Colossians were Gentiles. I'm sure there were many Jews there too, though, because they were. Paul would always go to the synagogue and start preaching. <clears throat> so, um, which are to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men, which things have a show, indeed a show of wisdom and will worship and humility and neglecting of the body, but it's not in any honor to the satisfying of dealing with the flesh. Satisfying meaning having done anything to really truly deal with your flesh. And the actual Greek there in that little phrase really bears it out. It says it better than those wordings there. <clears throat> All right, chapter 3. <clears throat> if you then be risen with Christ. Now remember, in what verse 20, he just said, wherefore, if you be dead. But there are no verses here. So how many sentences is that away? Let's say, well, his sentences are long anyway. That's one. That's two sentences back. You know, um, wherefore, if you be dead. If you then be risen. So you have to see this in context. First of all, you can't be risen unless you're dead. You know, Jesus didn't go around raising undead people. Well, it's, you know, it's a, it, 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 it needs to be that simple. No, I'm going to raise the dead. Whoops, you were already alive. Uh, you know, there has to be that verse 20 of the previous chapter, which is really two sentences away. But then, if you then be risen with Christ, seek, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth, because you're a Christian now and you shouldn't do that. No, for you're dead. It, it's still there. I mean, is that good or not? You know? The basis has to be the cross. The basis isn't a Christian doctrine of the cross. As I've said many times, the Christian doctrine of the cross has no power. The cross is the power of God. It says that in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. <clears throat> For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is our life, when, when Jesus, the life, appears... So he's not saying when Christ, who is your life, appears in the clouds. He's saying when Christ 
is your life appears, or in truth, I'm pretty sure that's the same word as manifests, begins to manifest in you. <clears throat> um, then shall ye appear also with him in glory. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. And again, mortify, put to death, put to death, put to death. Now, folks, if we just read chapter 2 and hold it, it we're going to walk around going, I'm complete. I'm complete in him. I'm so perfect. You know, I'm so dead. You know, or are you applying the cross? Are you, because you are dead, but you're applying it and making sure that that's a real thing in your life so that Christ may live in you. Amen? <clears throat> Amen on Skype up there? I'm starting to get hypnotized by that light. <laughs> it really is kind of just a big eye staring at me up there. We got a new, did you, I, you probably told them. Yeah, be sure and ask them if this, the, the, and they're going, ah, Randy looks like a big eye down here. <laughs> okay, so, <clears throat> mortify therefore, mortify therefore. If you're dead, mortify, for you're dead, mortify therefore. If you're dead, therefore put to death. In other words, <clears throat> we can walk around and go, I'm dead with Christ. And it's the truth. It is as true as true as can be. But that is in the realm where you are supposed to reckon from, where you are supposed to draw from, to mortify. So when you see something that appears contrary to him, something that says, I deny the cross. Because that's what, if it's alive, when Jesus put it to death, then it's something in you that is standing up uh, and denying the cross in you. I, you know, and we're allowing it. Well, I'm going to get over here with, you know, the flesh and say, I'm by the circumcision of Christ and I'm, I'm complete in him, you know, other than the fact that I just walked all over you, <laughs> you know, <clears throat> or had, had an attitude totally the opposite of the lamb, you know, then, you know, so he's saying this, this needs to be applied. In this whole chapter, that's what we're dealing with now. It's practical. It needs to be real. And what needs to be real? Okay, we can say the work that happened on the cross needs to be real in us. Yes, but ultimately, what everything it's going to talk about here are attributes of nature. They are. It's attributes of nature. He's not dealing with your theology here. He's dealing with your life. Dude, that is not the lamb. And, and all these attributes are, you know, uh, they're not saying, uh, ab above all else, be confident in yourself and, and be confident in the things that you've learned of the Lord so that you can carry yourself as one that can bless others. And no, it's all stuff of, you know, you need to, you need to get lower, you know, lift him up. What does that mean? Make sure you're lower, you know, if you understand. I mean, because it really is. I mean, the, all of this really is about put on him, put off you. And the things, and it's saying basically put off the things that were you before the cross, but the cross is done. But it's like God saying, but I have every intention that you live and walk this way. Remember we talked fairly recently about John 15 and the vine and the branches and everything. He's saying, I have every, you know, my plan and desire is that you be a branch through which his life flows through you. And, uh, you know, if it was a, uh, an old, old timey pump uh, well or something like that, that what comes out is Christ in nature, fruit, the fruit of his nature, not just you know, because we say, well, he's the vine and we're the branch, and, and God did that for an increase of Christ. Yes, he did, but he's not really needing a greater increase of Christ in truth in that certain sense. He's needing the manifestation of the life of him, and everything are manifest manifestations of nature, of, of being more like the lamb than the, than the devil, <laughs> or, or the lamb 
as in contrast to you <laughs> or me. <clears throat> All right, so let's see it real quick. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. In other words, he just said, you're above. You've been raised up. If you be risen to Christ, seek those things which are above. Stop manifesting things as if your life is still on this earth. Well, you know, the, the reality isn't that you, <clears throat> you're fighting earth things in the fullness of it. The reality is, is that you are knowing what the cross did and you're saying, I want that here in me. And, you know, if he increases, there can be a decrease of us. If we see more of the cross, we're going to see more of him and we're going to see less of us. So, <clears throat> mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, covetous, which is idolatry. Okay, so what this is doing, because it's fixing to change those things um, even more as we go into it, what he's doing is the same thing he was doing in Romans. And in Romans, he was starting off with, you know, uh, you know, mankind uh, is like this, and there's all this horrible stuff, and I had to, you know, there was, there was uh, 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 the, the things of the flesh and the things of, of uh, you can say homosexual or whatever, all of this stuff, and we're all getting, I'm sick to my stomach, uh, this is horrible. And then he moves into the Jews, and he says, uh, and it's no different with you. You're walking around, and you think you're puffed up, and you think you're something, and da-da-da-da. And that's every bit as bad as all of this stuff. And they need the cross, and you need the cross, but you need to see you, you need it just as much as they do, but you're too busy judging them. Remember, it's all about judging, and if you're too busy judging them, so, you know, you have no clue that you're guilty, but, uh, you know, that all may be guilty before God, right? You see the progression, and it goes right through that, and you, you begin to go, when you see it like that, instead of divide it up and going, yeah, but I was only a, a Pharisee or something, you know. I was a good, I was a good Pharisee, you know. No, 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 that we all, all have sinned, all have come short of the, the glory of God, not just all of, you know, of pleasing God or whatever. All have sinned and come forth, come, uh, come short of the glory of God. Well, what's the glory of God? Christ in you, the hope of glory. So, um, so he starts here. That's what he's doing right here. He starts with this stuff that we go, oh, yeah. That stuff's bad. Thank God that this doesn't apply to me so that we can get in our judgment mode and start being better, <clears throat> pointing fingers and saying, yeah, but he's going to, don't worry, he'll get to you. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> um, so, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. So he's not talking about rank sinners, but look at this. Um, uh, Seven, in which ye also walked sometime when you lived in them. But now you have put off all these things, and now he's starting to move a little more into us. Anger. Anybody had anger problems? Well, just, you know, go through anger management, which is the cross, God's method of anger management. You know, <laughs> okay. It, it works. Wrath, malice. Malice, meaning doing mean things on purpose to get back at people, right? Uh, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth, which, see, we go, yeah, I don't, I never cuss like that even when I was a sinner. What if he's not talking about being a sailor or something, cussing like a sailor? Um, but all the things that he would look at is, it's just the opposite of the altar, just the opposite of the, tabernacle just the opposite of all that the which things were a shadow of Christ and and uh, that we're still doing those things um, <clears throat> but now verse 8 but but now ye also put off all these anger wrath mass and black filthy communication out of your mouth lie not one to another okay so you know I love it in Revelation it says and these are gonna go you know that 
They're going to go into hell, all this bad stuff, bad stuff, this horrible thing, and you're going to get in there with the devil and the false prophet and the antichrist. We're going to dump all of you together and all liars. I, well, when I first read it, I went, then that's me because I've lied before, you know. But we go, but I'm not a liar. No, you are. You lie because you're a liar. You understand what I'm saying? So, <clears throat> it, again, he's just dumping us all together in the garbage heap and setting a match to it. He's saying, these are us. This, this is us. This is us. But he's not condemning in the sense. It's really not meant to. We read some of this stuff and go, oh, no. Oh, no. Don't read this. You know, this, you know. I don't want to know. <clears throat> it doesn't matter. Anything that's not Christ went to the cross. Amen? And what's Christ did go to the cross. But God raised that. Raised him. He took us there to put us to death. If you'd be dead, you'd be dead with Christ. So that his life could come forth. So that we could be the body of the one who laid down his life. <clears throat> Um, <clears throat> lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds. So the, the direct thing is saying, you, if the problem is lying, it's because you have not put off the old man with his deeds. You have claimed you're complete in Jesus without him being the completion in you. And it's, you know, if we've done that as a church or Bible school or anything, we need to stop it. We really do. All right. So, <clears throat> uh, and the proof of what I just said is um, verse 10. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. It's not renewed in the knowledge of him. It's renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that we may be conformed to the image of Christ. Now, travailing birth till Christ be formed in you. Um, all of those verses that talk about that uh, in the New Testament, it's always the same thing. We're, you know, uh, have, you know, seeing that you have put off the old man, but then verse 10 is saying, and have put on the new man. So that's saying, this was the goal. The goal wasn't just to, you know, sort of mystically 2,000 years ago put off the old man and now I received Jesus and I'm a saint. Okay, well, we're called saints strictly based on what he did, what was done in Christ because not too many of us are saints in real life. We're ain'ts. <laughs> we're falling short of the glory. We may have, you know, got the sin taken care of, but it said all of sin that comes short of the glory. And, we're, and God's trying to rectify the glory end of it after we're born again. Where there is neither, and see, here it is. So he's just saying, look, there's neither this or that. Up here he said, well, there's, you know, covetousness and idolatry, or, or let, let's start with fornication or inordinate affection, which um, every one of you have, have that manifested in you. Inordinate affection. I love saying stuff like that, just because it's Adam. It's not, but I, I like messing with you. Oh, is it the thing that I? <laughs> is it? Is it because I like eating bread a lot or something? <laughs> it's just not Christ. It doesn't matter. We don't need to identify. I'd be like walking to up to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and go, okay, I need to deal with that. And, deal with that. How about we just lay the axe to the root? You know, instead of wrestling with every piece of fruit that's on the thing. You know, and Jesus, John the Baptist says, stop sinning, and repent. Da, 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 right? John the Baptist says, repent of the fruit. But he said, but don't worry. You know, Jesus is going to come and he's going to lay the axe to the root and you don't have to repent of the fruit anymore. You'll be dead and he'll be alive. I didn't say you didn't need to repent, but I said 
repentance, repenting over the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, because that's what he's talking about, stuff that's come out of it, you know. Well, I'm sorry, sorry for this, and I'm sorry for that. And then we feel better. Oh, that was cathartic for me to do that. And God's going, where's my son? Oh, he's over there, you know. And, you know, when I was talking about uh, the vine and the branch in John 15, I kind of saw, and this may sound weird to you, but I kind of saw that that was the tree of life, that he's the vine, we're the branches, and it brings forth fruit. And that is... I mean, if there ever was life, that's it. That's the tree of life. And the scriptures might even end up calling you a tree of life, but you're just the branch or whatever. You know what I mean? Part of that. In manifestation. Okay, gosh, i got to do this here. All right, so there is neither Greek nor Jew. You know, so Greeks and Jews don't get along because they become Christians. It's neither that. They're not there. Whether there's neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond, nor free, but Christ is all and in all. That's the only answer. He's God. I, I didn't want to shape up the people in the church that are barbarians. They don't count, and you don't either. <laughs> okay? He does. Um... Put on, therefore. Okay, so he's saying put off, put on, and now he goes, put on, therefore. We talked about it, now do it. Right? I mean, look at the wording of him, because up here he says, well, put off these and, and put on this, and he goes, put it on then. I mean, it's so basically, you know, I don't know how Paul was if he'd be a Texan, but he'd probably say, well, put it on then. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, this, so he's, he's saying, put this, this on. Bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also you do. He didn't say, put on, put on you know, forbear everybody, put on humbleness of mind, period, long-suffering, now do it. He said, do it even as Christ did because Christ is in us to do it, to live it. Yeah, Jim. And it's, you know, if Christ is all and in all, why shouldn't we see a contrast? You know, if you be dead, you know, or if you be risen, then this is kind of the way he's talking. He, he's, it's like he's going, okay, he puts the doctrines out there first in chapter 2, chapter 1 also, but he puts it out there, and then he starts spelling out the practical reality, and he's just saying, look, if we really believe this junk, then why don't we do it, you know? If we really see that we're dead and we're risen with Christ, then we're not walking around going, I'm risen with Christ. We're going, I'm dead. And he is risen, and he is my resurrection and the life. And I'm for it, and I'm in. You know, Lord, I'm in. And so then we say, Make, give me the eyes to see anything that's not you. I mean, when I was, I really hate doing this because you have a class then, but when I was in Bible school, I remember I was reading the Bible a lot trying to figure this out, and there's the old man, and there's the devil, and there's, uh, there's uh, the flesh, and there's the world, and I'm, I'm like trying to figure out, okay, well, how do I deal with this? And, you know, I look at the world, and, you know, and I draw, oh, and all this kind of stuff, and and when I saw that I was dead, I just went, oh, it all has no power anymore because now it's his life. Uh, it wasn't like I had to, you know, take the cross like and sneak up on the world and go, you're dead, you know, and then come over here and say, okay, the flesh is going to work this way and he's, it's going to be slippery. So, you're dead, you know. The flesh goes, ah! you know. But, it, but instead, I saw, I don't have to figure out all those things or, or, or say, you know, 
or, uh, I, I don't have fornication or I really don't have evil concupiscence, uh, but Lord, deal with this in ordinate affection or whatever. And really, like, uh, that, that's my issue. He don't care about your issue. He's just going to wipe you out okay, and give you Christ. We don't have to fall into all of that trying to figure and wrestle with it. I got to get out of this particular thing. I, the cross has done it, but it's got rid of me. And in any area, it applies across the board. Christ is all and in all. Now, so... Verse 13, for bearing one another, well, I like, how about bowels of, kind, of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness. You see what I mean when I said this ultimately gets down to the attributes of the nature of the Lamb. He's not sitting on the throne going, well, you know, I'm pretty big now. You know, they did that stuff to me and, you know, I'm exalted now and uh, forget humbleness of mind or meekness you know I, I'm the exalted son of God worship me like, like I deserve oh my god if I get up there and it's like that I'm gonna go I don't know where else to go but this ain't it you know because I'm down here saying I'm dead and I want to put off this stuff that acts like it's not dead and I want to make it real and everything so you see that, and you see, you see that humbleness of mind. You see that uh, meekness. You see that long-suffering, forbearing one another, you know? I mean, you've heard me talk about long-suffering. We do not want to just say long-suffering. We, in our mind, we want to say long suffering putting up with people because that's Christ he's still putting up with us you know we should have been destroyed twice over ten times over you know but he's still putting up with us but but he's he's putting up with us so that we'll put off with him and put on with him so put up with till they put off and put on is that okay all right so then even as Christ, in the same manner as Christ forgave you, so also do you. The same way that he is treating you, you need to treat others. And above all these, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. Well, what does that mean? God is love. Put on love. It's the bond of perfectness. The Holy Spirit, how he relates to Jesus. The Jesus, how he relates to the Father. The Father, it's, it's never ending how they give themselves to one another and never have to worry about themselves because they're taken care of in the realm of that. But, you know, but he's going to check us because if we're looking for the reward of, well, y'all have to take care of me then. Okay, I'm going I'm to take care of you. I mean, could you see the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit? Well, you know, and, and the Holy Spirit go, look, y'all going to have to take care of me now because if you don't, I ain't going to do this. That's not a nature then. That's not a nature. That's your, your ch okay, I'm in this as long as it's going to support me. <clears throat> you're not in it at all. That's not even, you're not anywhere near the realm of it. You haven't put anything off, much less put something on if that's your spirit. You know, well, the Godhead works his way and it needs to work for me. <laughs> How did you get in here? That ain't no wedding garment. Take them out. <laughs> Amen. Well, let's end. I always feel so bad. I'm so wicked. <laughs> Father, we love you. We love you. We love your son. Thank you, Jesus, for being the, the lamb that you are to, to humble uh, the greatness of who you are and yet to see yourself simply as a lamb and as a servant, you came to minister to give your life a ransom to not to be exalted on that kind of a level or to exalt yourself, but to get lower than everybody else to the glory of the Father so that we could see the express image of God. Not the Father, but the express image of God. 
So we love you. We ask you to move in such a manner that these things can be put off and put on according to your order, according to your life, according to what your full intention was, so that we not just go through chapter 2 and then act like there's not a chapter 3. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay.